Religion has convinced people that there's an invisible man living in the sky. I do pay attention to comedians and what they have to say about religion because they are preaching a message. Welcome back to the Father Leo Show. We are dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. I love comedians. I love comedy shows. And a classic is George Carlin. He's got some very unique perspectives when it comes to God and his relationship to us. And so, minus the curse words, I'd love to comment on his understanding of our relationship to God and God's to ours. Religion has convinced people that there's an invisible man living in the sky who watches everything you do every minute of every day. And the invisible man has a list of 10 specific things he doesn't want you to do. And if you do any of these things, he will send you to a special place of burning and fire and smoke and torture and anguish for you to live forever and suffer and burn and scream until the end of time. But he loves you. He loves you. All right. I do. Listen, we all know that this is what a lot of people who are not religious think about particularly the Judeo-Christian understanding of God. They will say, I like the God of the New Testament more than the God of the Old Testament, the God of war and, and fires and, and, and death. And Jesus was just nice. And so George Carlin is a comedian, but I think in order to be a good comedian, you got to be smart. You got to understand where people are coming from and you got to understand timing. And I think him and his popularity understands that a lot of people think that God is this invisible man in the sky. He's got a set of rules. You don't follow it. You will perish for all eternity. In its simplest form, that's kind of true. But then he says, but this God loves you. And that's the crux because love is not as easy to understand as a math equation. Love is way more complex. And he didn't give the entire picture because the real picture is that for God so loved the world, he sent his only son to experience the torments of hell, that suffering, that agony. He descended to the dead. That's what our creed says in order to seal that for anyone who loves God. But love also requires freedom, the freedom to choose, to choose God's ways or to choose the opposite ways, which can lead to destruction. What's interesting is that George Carlin, as brilliant as he is also, doesn't take into account how saints experience tremendous suffering so that they can in following the Ten Commandments, actually build up a kingdom of love and of justice. So this is only kind of a very, very brief part of the story, which we call salvation history. It's obviously meant to make you laugh, and it does make you laugh, but it also makes you think, what kind of God do I believe in? Do I believe in this kind of God? Well, technically, I do not. While he might ascribe some things that are true about God, this kind of God ain't one that I believe in. Not at all. Because the God that I believe in actually has mercy on us, that actually has sent his son so that he can redeem us, that he can save us from these sins. And our obedience to the Ten Commandments is not slavish, but it's more than anything out of a loving relationship. And if I am free to choose God or not choose God, then I choose my own fate. And God can still love me even if I am deserving hell. But if I truly love God, then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask for his mercy. 
But here's another part of his uh, comedy show. And I got to admit, it is kind of funny. He loves you and he needs money. (laughs) He always needs money. He's all powerful, all present, all knowing and all wise. Just can't handle money. Religion takes in billions and billions of dollars, they pay no taxes, and somehow they always need money. You talk about a good bullshit story. If I may be permitted a small pun, holy shit! (laughs) Oh my goodness gracious. Now some people would be scandalized that I actually listen to this stuff. Well, I don't listen to it regularly, so relax, everybody. But I do pay attention to comedians and what they have to say about religion because they are preaching a message and they have the influence over millions of people. And I think if we as the Catholic Church can tap into an understanding of a sense of humor, we can have a positive effect on people. Now, what he had to say was interesting because he was basically sowing doubt in churches who focus on money. And you know what? I would kind of agree with him here because I think the more the church shows its interest in money— the less credible it becomes. Because we have to remember, we have to work as if everything depended on God. This is the part that's missing. Uh, Excuse me. We have to work as if everything depended on us, but we have to pray as if everything depends on God. And that's key to a healthy relationship for the church and the God that the church serves. Now, we know that money is a huge part of a church and a church's operation, especially one as big as the Catholic Church. We have, you know, billions of members, and we do a lot of good work in areas where they don't have much money. And while people will say, just sell a piece of artwork and you'd be able to feed millions of people, well, guess what? We'll feed them for a little bit of time, and then they'll die, but that artwork can stay up and People can come to those churches and not only connect and pray to God, they could be inspired by the beauty. And yes, money is needed. But we as a Catholic church have to be real careful about how we present our need for money. What we've got to do is create good programs, good initiatives, where people will be willing to make donations rather than make us kind of ask and beg for it. Because again, What he just did was he discredited the credibility of the church because of the church's insistence on money. He also made a little comment about how God is terrible with money. God ain't terrible with money. We are terrible with the gifts that God has given to us sometimes manifested in finances. So just wanted to offer some brief comments on this incredibly smart approach to religion and comedy. I don't disagree with him on a lot of these things because a lot of people think that we just believe in an invisible man in the sky who's just going to condemn us if we don't follow every Ten Commandment and that money is the root to all evil. So there's just a lot there that we have to unpack. But in the moment, what's interesting is that people are going to remember what he says because of how he made them feel. That's key. Whenever the church gives a message, we church people have to remember that what we have to say has to be precise, but also say it in a way that makes them sense, experience, feel the love and the presence of God. I hope that this gives you something to laugh about, something to think about, something to pray about. Let us know what you think about my little 
little dialogue, my little reaction. Tell me who your favorite comedian is. Put that in the comments below. Send us any clips that you would like for me to offer commentary. Make sure you subscribe and encourage other family and friends to subscribe as well. And more importantly, if you are able to support us on Patreon, I guarantee you we're going to do good things with that donation. Namely, by creating good content that will feed you body, mind, and soul as we continue to dish out faith, culture, and commentary. God bless you. Stay hungry for God. <laughs>